Conversations intensify at Greenway International Airport. The leader of the maple syrup gangs is trying to make a quick getaway. Will he be able to escape the law and start a new life somewhere else? Welcome to Rural Canada, A. Eh? Welcome back to another episode of Rural Canada A. In this episode, we're ditching the downtown for a beautiful, empty desert plot. In today's episode, you're going to see us get to work on the International Airport. Although I guess it's more of a small regional airport. We'll complete that. And at the end of the episode, we have a small little PO tutorial thanks to a viewer suggested comment. We're coming to this plot here. I've got this nice road laid out for kind of where I want the runway to sit and where I think it, uh, you know, make sure that the plot was big enough first, right? So we're going to come in and flatten everything out here to get our sort of landscape up and running um, at the area there as well, too. I don't know. I'm always torn. Like, I get the idea of why it makes it flat. Um, I guess it is, like, useful and airports are typically super flat. Um, but I've always kind of, like, been, <laughs> I don't know, like, eh, is this, the, is this the best way to do it? But, you know, City C was coming, so there's no changing. Uh, anyways, I gotta come in and uh, now make the terrain more kind of what I want it to be, you know? Uh, so I guess you can come in and do this. Okay, it's not so bad. It's fine. <laughs> coming out here. Now, this is gonna help us tie together the community that we built in the uh, Realistic Airports episode. Where we came in and, uh, yeah, built a small little community out uh, nowhere inspired by my experience in a, um... The Tappan, uh, the, yeah, the Tappan area, the Okanagan, and the cool uh, gas station as well, too. Um, so, yeah, coming in with the uh, taxi. No, sorry, not the taxiway. <laughs> the runway there. Gonna extend that road there because I felt like the runway needed to be just a little bit bigger. But let's talk about the inspiration for this episode. So, we're inspired by two places now. In the previous episode, I talked about. Uh, how this episode was actually going to have a very special sentimental build for me. However, unfortunately, a lot of that progress was lost because, as you know, I shared in the community tab that I've been having a lot of issues with the Greenway save and I didn't know if I'd be able to get this episode out in time. Luckily, it ends up working and we're able to get it functioning uh, enough to bring you another episode. And I hope it stays that way. I still don't know if it's fully fixed or not. Uh, but I, I really do hope that it's, it's functioning enough for this. Um, but yeah, the inspiration for this one comes from Chilliwack, British Columbia and their small little airport that you're seeing on screen now. Um, and that does tie into the episode. So next episode, or sorry, into the sentimental episode that this was supposed to be with a really cool build that means a lot to me that Smiley's helped make possible. Um, that'll be occurring next episode there. Uh, likewise, we're also taking inspiration from Kamloops, British Columbia, obviously going back to the Okanagan roots there, uh, with Kamloops, uh, yeah, Kamloops' airport. I don't know, is it an international airport? I guess they call it like small regional airports. Um, but yeah, the, the Kamloops airport. <laughs> taking inspiration from that one heavily, especially in the front layout that you'll see as well too. Um, but uh, yeah, those two places for inspiration. Not too much from Kelowna. I wanted this to be a much smaller airport. This is probably my favorite build that we've done yet and definitely my most ambitious, which has led to our biggest episode yet of Rural Canada A. I also didn't celebrate much last episode, but we made it to 10 episodes. We're on the 11th episode, and it feels so good. I talked about in episode one why I came back to YouTube as I've been doing Twitch content full-time um, as my, my full-time gig for a year now, and recently got back into YouTube. I did try YouTube a bit, and it just wasn't. I got so burnt out, uh, but I discussed that on episode one, so go check that out. Um, yeah, I'm so happy with this. 11 episodes in, I'm obsessed with this series. I'm having so much fun meeting so many amazing people. So thank you so heckin' much to all of you out there. Um, yeah, all of you that, that support, you know, the likes, the comments, the subscribes, the questions. Um, the comments, though, are so cool, man. I appreciate you all so, so heckin' much. Um, so thank you all so much um, for everything. This little family that we're building here, this little community, like... It's so freaking cool, man. It, it um... I don't know, I get, I get up every day with a 
beautiful smile on my face. Um, just knowing that I get to make content for all of you and, and it really inspires me to make the best content that I can for all of you. So thank you all so, so much. And you see we start out here with the Nap Highway. We're actually going to end up changing this for a big urban roads uh, one way. Like I think it's like a two lane one way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come in and change it out for. I also have been using grass a lot here, which I'm going to end up changing. I didn't end up liking the look of it, but that is because the grass ruin texture on these uh, highways, like the NAF highways, I think it does it on all highways, vanilla highways, any highway or road that has a ruined uh, little strip, like a little green ruin strip, seems to be Z fighting with the Laviant. Um, Gravel texture that you see here. I don't know what texture this is exactly, but you know, this little deserty rock theme that we have, it seems to be conflicting with it. Uh, yeah, I don't know, don't know what that's all about, but you know, it is what it is. You just kind of deal with it. But if you convert the terrain to grass, it doesn't Z fight, but that doesn't look good in all cases. You know, the, the deserty look is, is really what I'm trying to capture in, in more space, especially when we're outside of the downtown. Um, as you can see here with the Kamloops International Airport, it's a huge desert, right? Like it's just all dry. And the only green space that you really do see is within the confines of the airport and leading up to the uh, terminal there as well. So I'm gonna try and capture that. I think we do a good job by the end of it. This ends up being, I feel like I say this about every single build, you know, we, we do a cool build, like the bridge one. The bridge is my favorite build up to date. I think the bridge actually is my favorite build out of all of them. But I don't know, man. This one was really cool. I was so nervous about it. I'm still nervous, you know, uh, waiting to see how, how how it does when we put it out there because I'm not an aviation nerd. I'm not an airplane nerd. Uh, so, you know, it's all um, fairly, fairly new to me. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, coming coming back in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 ner it's you know, it's nerve wracking because I'm not... Um, I'm not some big uh, aviation nerd, but that does lead into the question of the video, though, which is not really a question. It's more so me asking. I don't know. Basically, I want to hear from all you aviation nerds out there, airplane enthusiasts. Um, at the end of the episode, take a look at the build. Let me know. What did you like? What didn't you like? What did you wish I added? Uh, what should there be more of? Now, I'm not going for like some insane ultra realistic, you know, type thing, uh, but because uh, it's more meant to be like a space filler, right? Um, you know, we do cool things here and there, but more meant to be sort of space filler. Um, but yeah, let me know and I'll see what I can, uh, what I can do to, to, to make some of those changes and get some of that stuff added in there as well. Gonna come with the parking lot. I was initially thinking about doing it custom, right? With a, um, with that ploppable asphalt, like how we've done most of our parking, especially when we talk about the parking with like the realistic parking episode. And so coming in with it. I don't think that it was the, like, it, it ends up not being what we do, but I don't think it was the right sort of, um, build, you know what I mean? Like, it was, like, the right sort of thing, uh, the ploppable asphalt one for this. I, I do think, um, kind of channeling from one of my favorite creators, Jeremy Thunder, uh, going with the parking, yeah, parking lot roads, uh, instead. And so I'm gonna come up with this line here using this, uh, pedestrian path, one of my favorite pedestrian paths, to sort of mark where people would be, uh, leaving the terminal and having their pedestrian cut through so that it's a straight shot, uh, straight to the terminal and straight through the parking lot there. Uh, and then we'll get accessible uh, parking as well near it too. So that they have accessibility right into that path that leads you straight into the terminal. Still not the most happy with this terminal. I couldn't find anything that screamed like small... Um, you know, that screamed like GTA 5, uh, what's Sandy Shores? Is that what it's called? Sandy Shores, um, type airport. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't find something that, that screamed like those vibes to me. And I wasn't in the mood to make it custom, you know, maybe, maybe younger Moose from two years ago would have made it custom, but you know, older Moose, uh, from two years <laughs> likes things simple, you know? <laughs> So I create a node here just so that I can get the nodes correct. Now, there is a mod, well actually it's incorporated in Network Anarchy now called Node Spacer um, by Cuboid. And I don't know how it works. I don't know where to find it. I don't know how to use it, but I have a understanding that it would have made what I'm trying to do here easier if I just understood how it works. And if I did this on a live stream, Q would yell at me because Cuboid's a mod for me. And so he'd be watching and wondering what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, node controller makes these so easy. I remember making these parking lots and trying to get them realistic, like as close as they are for what you're seeing here on screen. And I never could get it to look that um, uh, that good until node controller came out, man. So many of these mods, these, 
you see them on the workshop, you don't know, you're like, oh, what's this going to be? And now you look back on it, it's like, wow, absolute game changers. Like when Intersection Marketing Tool came out, just absolute game changing mods. Man, so, so heckin' cool. This looks really good with that, that uh, path leading up to it. Uh, and then we're going to come in and replace something with it instead. Um, but thinking about it now, I realized that I forgot to put an invisible pathway. So it doesn't actually technically function. And I should do that after, you know, this video's done and edited and ready to be shipped out to the masses, you know? Uh, it's definitely something I should, should do. So we're going to add the cross in here. And then I'm going to come in with node controller to make sure that it all lines up beautifully there. Or I guess uh, move it instead. I didn't know controller today. Eh? Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we're gonna come in with the most famous decal of all. This famous, beautiful brick decal that I use all over the city. This one's gonna get a ton of use here. And um, yeah, it's gonna it's just gonna be the template for all over the city. You know, like if we get really far out of this build, which I mean, we're three months away from City Skylines 2. Who knows where we're gonna be at this build? Um, you know, when's, when's its end date gonna be? But I'll tell you something cool right now. So, Talking City Skylines 2 here for a second. Everything that I've seen about City Skylines 2 is like big city. You know what I mean? Like everything that we've seen. Um, there's three cities, I think, out there from what I had heard um, for the videos. Like there's three, you know, one from Biffa, one from Toady, and one from um, uh, $2.20. Uh, what I kind of want to do now, my goal is to do get our Dutch series up and running in City Skylines 2, get our Van Musifer, which is inspired by Vancouver, series up and running in Cities 2. And then, of course, uh, a small town one. Here's the thing. There's no bikes at launch, so there'll be no Dutch city from me at launch. And if I'm being honest, I can't even do a Vancouver city at launch because there's no bikes, right? Um, so with that being said, I think what my goal is to do is, is to continue the series, maybe like a sister city. Maybe we draw a little bit more Kelowna inspiration in City Skylines 2 for our first series. Uh, let's see if we can do a small town and if they function in cities too, how do they work? Are they possible? You know, answer all these questions. I think that's going to be our move for uh, City Skylines 2 for our first ever YouTube series. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, what do you what do you th what do you think of that? Um, I think we're going to do it regardless, like because I don't have to worry about bike infrastructure as much, right? Um, but yeah, I do hope that they get bikes in, in pretty early on, you know. So continuing on here, working on the parking lot. And I know I can hear people screaming in the comments. And, Why are you not using parking lot snapping? Well, I'm just a city skylines boomer, I guess. Um, you know, I, I like to do things the hard way, the, 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 the old way. Although even then, it's like I've got nothing on like early prez videos a strict toaster um you know flux trance like the uh, the ogs right that really had to struggle to get things to look realistic back in the day uh you know here i am just not <laughs> it's in parking lot snapping but you know it is what it is um and then we're gonna come up with more accessible parking on the side there get this all lined up did i yeah okay i was gonna say i did put yeah okay accessible on both sides and then we're gonna come over and copy and paste it yeah i don't know i just never got into parking lot snapping mod I also got to come in, you know, talk about things that I forgot to do in the episode. I got to come back in and convert all these to yellow parking as well, too, because I definitely think that the airport would have yellow parking for it. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to come in and adjust there as well, too. Getting this all lined up so that the nodes are all nice there. Now, I have said in previous episodes, try and keep the nodes from being red. Uh, just because AI can get a bit sussy when you're using node controller. You see a red node, it can be a bit sussy. But in some cases, you just got to do it. It is what it is. Um, so I'm coming up with these spruces here. I don't know that I like these spruces. Um, they might change. They've grown on me through filming and editing the footage for this episode. They have grown on me. I'm still not 100% on them, though, and I'm almost thinking, like, maybe a Ponderosa, or at the very least, like, a, a Douglas fir. You know, a nice nice little uh, deserty Douglas fir might look better. Um, but I I don't know. The thing is, the spruce is nice because you the biggest thing to know about nature detailing out here and detailing airports with nature detailing, once you have your ATC tower in air traffic control, you got to make sure that it's visible from everywhere. They had to be able to see everything, regardless of like where planes are coming from. They got to be able to see everything. And I feel like if I, you know, I got to avoid big trees, right? And, and focus on visibility there. Going to come with this road. Super happy with the look of this. And I'm overall extremely happy with the look of this entire build. 
but extremely happy with the look of the entrance into the city here and the way that it all comes together. Um, yeah, just super happy with it. Now, this build's going to evolve over time. This is, again, just laying the groundworks for the airport, showing you guys how you could build in your cities a realistic-looking small airport that does function. Um, and we will detail and progress on it throughout other episodes. So there will be bits and pieces of this included into other episodes, especially next week's episode. Um, so expect more of that. This is not final. If it doesn't look done, if you see something where you're like, eh, that doesn't look finished to me, or that doesn't look complete. Well, that's because it's not, you know, it's, 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 it's not complete, you know, uh, and we'll, we'll keep on progressing on it as we go here. So yeah, nobody's parking on that road. Don't like that. So yeet them from there. <laughs> and now I'm going to come in and we're going to get some of this airport stuff added here. I would have done a little bit more of this on this episode, but I was worried about length. And, you know, lo and behold, the airport took way longer than I thought it would and led to our thickest episode yet of Rural Canada A. Now, I placed small, medium, medium, small, right? Thing is... Only planes that look good and fit the size of this airport are going to be the small ones. Even the medium ones were too big, which like kind of, I don't know, it kind of threw me. I was like, that, wait, really? You know, like that's, huh, okay, I didn't didn't expect that, right? Um, so I got to come back in here and delete the uh, medium ones. I don't think there's any medium plane that does work coming from an airport of this size. I could use advanced vehicle options to come in and adjust the planes that spawn. But again, I don't think that there is a single medium plane that comes out. Like, even that one's technically a small one, eh? Man, the small, like, they don't, I don't know. The small ones don't look, they even, they, they look too big. Um, yeah, I don't know, especially the strict toaster one. Or is it strict toast dare? It is strict toast dare. Oh my god, that's so good. What a good pun. Bisquicklehausen crushed it with the airplanes. Like, so damn good. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to have to go in with small only. And even then, go into advanced vehicle options and adjust the small planes. Uh, just to see what we can come up with there. Um, because it, it just felt like it was too out of place there. I think I... Yeah, let's do it. We're going to hop on a plane here and see what the view is. And there's actually a spot coming up here where it gives me big Microsoft Flight Sim vibes, which is kind of cool. Uh, but here we go. I hope everybody's buckled in. As we take off into the beautiful air, the plane's flashing. I don't know if that's good or bad, but, uh, you know, something that happens. Gonna look back behind me here, and then there it is. Look at that view, eh? There's a Microsoft Flight Sim vibes, yeah? I don't know. It felt like Microsoft Flight Sim vibes to me. Um, but yeah, coming back in to make uh, more progress on the airport here and get this up. But it's cool that we got this functioning right off the bat, eh? They, they seem to go full send, like, right away, which is really cool. And, like, once you get people... So we've got it so that's functioning now, but people are going to start driving out here and accessing it. And it really comes together beautifully. Makes it... I don't know. Again, it ties that, that city together, but it, this is such a critical build in my opinion to really bring this city to life and add some sort of atmosphere to it gonna remove crossings here but ultimately what i'm gonna do is at a certain point here i'm gonna convert that mallard into a procedural object because i don't want people accessing it the roundabout's not accessible it's for cars right it's not for people to walk into the the center of it there at all um so i will adjust that at some point there coming in with those new aprons that they added which is essentially like well it's not surface painter but it's something you know, it's close, uh, which is cool. And I could probably use those all over. The only downside about them versus Surface Painter is that uh, these identify as a building, right? So every time you're placing one of those down, if you're somebody who hits the building limit, because um, yes, there is a building limit, uh, that is something to take into consideration, right? They, you know, placing those down, they do count as buildings. Now for us, that's never going to be an issue. Even if we were like great at progressing on building a big, huge city, like it's a small build that we're doing. It just is never going to become a thing. Um, so looking back in hindsight on this footage, like all these taxis, so I'm trying to get them to line up, right? They will all line up when I convert them to small. So this work was kind of for nothing because it's just going to become all small and they're all going to work on a straight line. It's just because I didn't think that like having it angled and crooked in certain spots like made much sense. You know what's wild here though? I did use move it on these small terminals to get the lines to line up. Crazy thing is I, I was positive. I was like, Moose, what are you doing? This is going to break it. It didn't actually break it, and the planes still function. They come out of the ones that we use Move It on. Isn't that crazy? Like I could have sworn that Move It would have broken it. Um, but yeah, I was I was watching it for a bit after building this uh, and getting the footage together, and it didn't end up breaking it. So cool to see the planes uh, flying around. Even though, you know, we all know that the plane AI in this game is is jank. Um, as Teddy Radko has shown, you can do some stuff to manipulate it in your favor, but um, it's pretty jank. Ha, <laughs> ha,
Uh, but that being said, seeing the planes flying around and having an airport in your city, gosh dang, does it look good, you know? Gonna come with some hangers. This one's way too large, uh, so we'll switch it out for the small hangers. Uh, but the hangers had some cool atmosphere. Make it feel a little bit more full, complete out there, you know? Yeah, look at that, eh? They look so good. Oh, I, I love it. Love what it's uh, added to it. We're gonna get ATC up in here, and then I'm gonna do a quick scan to make sure that's got clear viewing. Everything's looking good there. ATC can see everything that it sort of, you know, needs to see. <laughs> Uh, and then from there, we're going to add a, a fueling station here. Um, which could do something with those trucks to make them, like, not Scania trucks? They, they look like Scania trucks. Make them, like, a little bit more American fueling uh, trucks, you know? But, yeah, it is what it is. I was thinking about doing cargo out here. I don't like the look of the cargo road, and it just doesn't seem like small town to me. Um, there probably should be some cargo to some degree. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do. We'll add that at a later date. I got to figure out how I'm going to make that work and make it look like it fits within the build uh, because I just wasn't uh, too happy with, with it at all. Um, so, you know, we'll see. That, that's something that, you know, I'm going to see if I can find a way to add it. I'm um, going to come in here with the wild, wild hedge or something like that. Create a nice little circle of hedges here, you know, in uh, paying homage to the roundabout in... Um, Downtown Greenway, if you remember, with the has the, the same hedge there. I see the people there. I don't like it. Convert it to PO. How cool is this mallard, though? Even adjusting the height slightly there. Look at how good this looks, eh? It adds so much atmosphere to this build, and like, oh man, I just I can't get over how freaking awesome it turned out. How good it looks. Just that little mallard. And the cool thing is, that mallard is Canadian. It's from Alberta. It's the world's uh, uh, tallest, largest mallard from Alberta. Isn't that crazy? It would, now, I will say, it would be really cool if it was a Canada goose. But the fact that this is like an actual statue, and it's in Alberta, which is only a province away from British Columbia, um, that's so cool to me. Like, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> I, I just, I love it. And it really does look amazing, like, as you're driving up to it. Gonna use this new pond asset that came with the last uh, DLC. Pretty sure it was like the... Yeah, the hotels, right? The the DLC one there. And now I don't think that this is something that necessarily would occur in the Okanagan. Like maybe in Kelowna, but it's, we don't really have lots of ponds. You know what I mean? Like it's not really... I don't really have lots of these these ponds around. And I, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily because of the desert climate. I mean, maybe that has something to do with it. But um, at least in, in Kamloops, we don't have too many of these things around. Um... But I go ahead, it just, it looks awesome. And, and, you know, the thing is, it does still look like something that would be built at an airport like this at some city in the Okanagan, you know what I mean? So it still fits in. It doesn't look out of place. Otherwise, I would just not do it and, you know, we'd come up with something else out over here. But it does end up fitting in and it looks really cool. And at the end, you'll see how it really ties together. Um, it makes it, oh man, it just looks so good. Like, yeah, stick around for the ending cinematics. You know, I, I, I would really encourage all of you to, you know, if, if, um, yeah, just stick around for the end. Stick around to the end. The ending cinematics, they're so good on this one. Um, and I think they're good on all the videos, um, you know, but, uh, the mysterious few who leave, uh, you know, before those, those, those ending cinematics, stick around. They're, they're really fire on this one. And, uh, yeah, no, they, 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 they look so, so heckin' good. Um, so I'm messing with the dirt pass, and then I suddenly realize, as maybe you are realizing, um, that it looks horrible, and I hate it. <laughs> so I tried a few different things. Ultimately, I will settle on the Clues path, which looks the best, and I should have used that from the start. And if I'm being honest, I should use it a lot more all over. Like, look at that. looks horrible. <laughs> that looks so bad. <laughs> Even using... Oh, God, it's getting worse. It's going to be worse before it gets better. Uh, yep, and then we delete it all. And then I think I remember, like, big brain moment. Use the clues paths. And here we go. We tie it together. And it ends up looking so much better using these paths. I need to use these all over. But then you don't really drag out the um, pavement. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some paths will, like, draw, like, they have, like, pavement attached to it. Like, this one doesn't have that. I don't know how to explain it better. <laughs> that sounds like such a bad explanation, but... It's just a really good path. Use it. It. It's. I need to. And I do need to use it more. You know. It's. 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 
the most ideal path. Literally perfect. Um, so we're going to come in and line this up around the pond here too. Um, now again, as mentioned, this is not the final phase of this build by any means. It's merely to get the infrastructure and the bones set for the airport. We will expand on it uh, as episodes pass. Not every episode, but every episode or so. Uh, making a little more dents and, and, and progress on the airport, um, such as coming in and detailing this, because we do need to do that for the pond. Let's get some ducks in there. Let's get some, uh, maybe some water features, um, you know, maybe some lily pads up in here to really sell the look of it a little bit more, I think would be really cool. Uh, but regardless, the bones that we laid down in this episode, I'm really, really proud of how it ends up looking. Um, yeah, I think it turns out super well. We're going to delete this one, because I think one path is the better route to go on this side. So we're going to yeet that, yeet that and then come and draw one out. Yeah, see, that looks so, so much better. You see, I don't know, maybe it's the same for all of you, but even for me, just watching this back now, recording the commentary, the spruces are growing on me. They're growing on me. Maybe if I did, like, I just love blue spruces, so that's why I chose blue spruces. But maybe if I went with, like, you know, a silver spruce or a white spruce, maybe it would make it grow on me a little bit more, because I feel like the blue is a bit you know, intense. They have lots of blue spruces in Alberta, especially Calgary, most notably in Calgary. But I don't think it's a thing in Kamloops, British Columbia. Um, nor do I think it's a thing in the Okanagan. And I do think that maybe alders or ponderosas would look better. We're using alders for here, so maybe use alders over there. Or even just the plain trees as well, too. Just gotta watch the size, right, um, for the, you know, for the ATC terminal. Um, but yeah, let's dive into the, uh, the live play. Welcome back, everybody, to the live play portion of today's episode. Really, really happy with what we've come up with and what I've been able to craft here. The only thing, like, this is so cool, hey, and so heckin' Canadian. The only thing is, what would make this more Canadian if it was a Canada goose? But this is actually a statue from Alberta, world's tallest mallard. So, like, that's kind of super cool. I really, really love it. I think this area, here's the detailing that we did that I just didn't want to uh, bore all of you with. It's, it's grass over and over and over again. I was watching the uh, Maddish Moose stream, so that helped, you know, to make this more bearable. <laughs> Place it on the grass. And then came in with some uh, cool paths just to make it all functional so that people will use it. I don't know how many people actually end up using it. Maybe if I place some, like, I don't know, some, some things, like some functional benches to encourage it. Uh, people to use it, then then maybe they'll come through and use it. And I, actually, I bet you that's exactly what would uh, bring people in. Because it would be cool to see a you know, couple people moving around uh, out and around here. And uh, maybe come in with some, like, ducks and stuff on the water would be really cool. Maybe some, like, lily pads. I'll, I'll see what I can come up with for it. Um, but yeah, this admittedly maybe isn't the most, like, Okanagan thing, right? We don't really have, like... Uh, ponds or, you know, uh, thing, things like this, like smaller you know, city ponds in the, uh, like in, in, in Kamloops or in, in, in uh, Okanagan cities that much. And I don't know if that's just because of like how dry the climate is because the Okanagan is a desert region. Um, regardless, this looked amazing. And, and the thing is like, while it may not exist IRL from the places we are drawing inspiration from, if I'm being honest, this does feel and look like something that could exist at an airport in an Okanagan city. So, to me, you know, it passes the, the feels right test and looks like something that would definitely include. And just this entrance here, right? The highway, the way it comes into this roundabout here and then branches into the airport. Like, I am so stoked at how this turned out. And the whole airport as a whole, too. I was really nervous about this build. This is why we're not doing a question of the video because my... Well, I guess we are doing a question of the video, but the question of the video is just, I want to hear from all of you. I want feedback from all of you. I'm not an airport nerd. I'm not an airplane nerd. This is all, like, super new to me. Um, I play Flight Sim, but, like, but like not good. <laughs> so I want to hear from all of you, you know. Um, now, we're not going to go, like, ultra-realistic getting everything in. Like, we're probably not going to do signs and stuff on the airport here. There's, you know, going to be a cutoff limit for me. But I do want to hear from all of you. What can I do different? What could I add? What do you like? What do you not like? You know, I want to hear from you. I want to hear feedback from the, the, the aviation nerds. Uh, out there on, on things that I could do to this. Um, I know it's super simple, but that's, you know, welcome to small town international airports, right? Like they're small town airports. <laughs> and I love it. Like it fills the space beautifully. It, to me, looks realistic. I'm really happy with it. The only thing I need to change, notice this after, is that the planes that we have spotting, 
apparently see i thought this is too big right like that's just it's too big for this airport um so the only planes that we want spawning actually are small airplanes i thought maybe medium could work but it's it's just too too big so we're gonna go with small airplanes i'm gonna come in and clean this up and make them all the small type uh there as well but here's the things that we did off camera so added the fueling station added a helicopter depot for the fire department and then of course we've got the uh yeah the airport fire department there and we are going to come in and detail this up in episodes probably do a little bit more of this next episode because i talked on the last episode about uh, a special build that I'm going to work on. And unfortunately, Greenway was broken, so I lost progress from that. Um, so I'm going to come back and do that in the next episode. But I want to get the airport in and, and done. It feels like a part that, like... I know we still have a lot of work to do in downtown, but it's nice to get out of the city every now and then and, and get something like this. Because this really... I don't know. It gives... First of all, it ties this region together, which is awesome. It gives this region a purpose. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Just, just add some life to the city, in my opinion. Like... These little things, you know, like doing a Greyhound Depot or an airport. Like, yeah, see, look at this. Look at this. That, that's, it's too big. Like, that's medium? Really? Yeah, okay. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna switch up to small only. <laughs> I'll get that sorted for, for next episode. But yeah, overall, I'm super happy with how this, this build turned out. Um, and we will come in and detail this up overall to, to get this in. Um, and then the one thing I want to do, so the planes come in, they land right but if they're taken off they take off kind of like well you saw it in the um time lapse there when i decided to ride a plane but they take off boom 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 something like this you know and they fly out that way what would be more cool and i think i can do this because teddy radko has an episode talking about manipulating plane ai for more realism is i want them to fly straight right and they're gonna turn turn it here because that will look super cool from the city right like so if you're down here and we look at the city it's up here, right? You can see like sort of the buildings off to the side. If they fly this way, oh, that's gonna look so crisp and cinematic. I mean, and even if they turn, like turn over this way over it, like I think that's just gonna look so crisp. Also, speaking of the downtown, I snuck a building in. A Smiley's big building in. If you hate it, let me know. But the thing is, I'm gonna try and convince you that it this this it's the tallest building, right? We did initially have this as the tallest building. I'm gonna convince you that this actually works because I'm gonna come down here. And I don't think anyone can tell me that that's not the most Okanagan looking shot right there. You know, ridiculously huge parking garage, generic boring office buildings everywhere, couple OG buildings hanging on for life. And then the new, you know, hashtag maybe Vancouverism, something something gentrification, you know. Uh, coming in for the city like that that just looks so okanagan to me <laughs> and I, i'm really happy with how that turned out uh but yeah really really happy with the airport build here um yeah see so you're gonna see it here how they take off right and they take off at like a ridiculous turn there so i i think i could get that sorted you know yeah, we'll, we'll see if i can uh before i wrap up the episode and uh you know give thanks to the amazing amazing patreons and coffee supporters the support's been amazing and it, and it really 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 does help um so i appreciate it so much i had a question about how i mess with decals uh in procedural objects i want to go over that real quick here what i'm going to do first we're going to open up intersection marking tool i'm going to come in and do my classic um actually no you know what why don't we do it I might need the... No, no, okay. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll do this. We'll do it with the classic sidewalk because this is how I do it. And this this actually does tie into PO decal manipulation. Is I'm going to come in. We're going to type in median here. Huh. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is... Yeah, I don't have a template. That's right because it's... <laughs> a decorative network. Come in. Search for it. We're going to type in median. And these are vanilla median. So they share vanilla texture. And I use these for the custom sidewalks that you all have seen, right? So we'll come in and say we want the sidewalk to be like just off as they usually are in, in smaller cities like this. Push it off over there, raise up the elevation here, and then I'm going to actually copy this real quick. So let's come in, copy, zoom out, boom, paste that. Fun fact, I just learned about this, by the way. Press this button. Isn't that crazy? Inverts it. Instantly matches up. I, I didn't know that, you know, 9,000 hours in the game and... and uh, it's crazy. You'll never know everything about this game, though. And I love it so much, learning these cool little things. Also, looking at this now, this is absolutely what I'm going to do detailing-wise in this area. Like, I'll probably do that for these sidewalks as well. But if I come in and we want this to be a decal, let's grab the famous 
brick decal that's kind of our, our bread and butter theme for this. Now you can line this up here, right? And like, that's fine, but it does bleed over the edge, right? So it, uh, or decal bleeding, which refers to like the decal sort of bleeding over a network surface. If this were a prop, that it would be fine. But because it's a network, what I'm gonna do is convert it to PO and look at that, eh? Perfectly lines up with the curves. Now I think the, uh, the question two was talking about like how I manipulate it to fit edges and whatnot. And all I really do is you look at the vertices here of it, come in and uh, that's all I'm doing, right? That's all I'm doing with PO manipulation is dragging it along the vertice, however I want it to line up or if I want it to come down like this. The only thing you need to watch for is if you're on height. So it's fine here, but what you can have happen, see that, see how you can sort of change it you can like look at how it, you see how it's moving there, right? With that view. So you want it to be as flat as possible, right? Before it starts to do that weird, like graphic moving thing. So that's the only thing to watch for. Ideally, if you're converting a decal to PO, flat surfaces work best. But you know what's really cool about this is if you're working on heights, if you use the ploppable asphalt mod, I'm gonna come in here with a ploppable asphalt surface. You know what's really cool about PO and decals? Select the surface, right? And we're gonna raise this up. So say I'm building something that's on elevated heights here and I'm using ploppable asphalt to sort of sell that idea and it's raised up. Check this out. We're gonna grab this decal. I'm gonna come over here to the ploppable surface. And what I'm gonna do is grab the green arrow or the green line. Look at that. You can actually raise decals using like all the way up here, you know, on varying heights and stuff like that. It, it's so useful. I use that so heckin' much. Um, but yeah, really cool, cool trick there. So yeah, that's kind of how I mess with um, decals in PO. If you guys have any questions as well too, and you're like, man, I wish you would cover this more in an episode, please let me know. I'm also considering doing a community post that is like an AMA. Like you can ask me anything if it's a tutorial question like can you show me how to do this if you want to know more about me as a creator anything like it would be an ama whatever you guys want to hear um yeah let me know let me know i i um if i go through with it i'll i'll make sure to let everybody know as, as best i can join the discord too for updates on stuff like that uh, it won't be for a while um but yeah i'm very curious so bunch of stuff that we've talked about today but like a, let me know what you want me, what you wish I added to the airport and just like general aviation nerds out there, let me know. And my second question to all of you, would you be interested in an AMA where you can ask me anything again, whether that be, hey, can you show me this cool thing with PO or can you show me how to do this in cities or just personal whatever uh, questions? Uh, and if I feel comfortable, I'll ask it. You know, if it's too personal, I don't feel like sharing. I, I just won't answer it. But um, yeah, let me know. Let me know if you guys uh, would be interested in that. And uh, that's all I got for you today. Welcome to Greenway International Airport. Uh, I got to come up with a better name. I mean, that's what it's called. But like, we got to come up with like a little a little thing for it. You know, I think we could do this together. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome to Greenway International Airport. I want to say a huge heck and thank you to the Patreon supporters and coffee. It's the best way to support me outside of Twitch. The support helps me to keep making this content for all of you as I do uh, content creation on the Twitch side full time. So any support seriously does help a ton. Huge thank you to Disney Dude One, Shane Turner, Fish Bob, Hey Guy Buddy, Braygard, William Epps, The Yed underscore, Anthropophagic, The Jonah, and Comrade Karen. The support means so heckin' much to me. I really do appreciate it. As always, remember, no matter what life throws at you, you matter. You are loved. You have a purpose. I'm a Canadian moose, and I will catch you all next week for another episode of Rural Canada A.